Oh, damn. <laughs>
100 years oh. today since the start of Prohibition. What a fiasco. <laughs> Well, and could you imagine? And then, like, medicinal bourbon, and I was like, well, what does that even mean? I think it was like a pint a month is mm -hmm. what you could get prescribed. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was heavily regulated. It's not sure. like that was fine whiskey, and it wasn't. No. But because uh, bourbon and any kind of whiskey requires aging, mm -hmm. uh, all these companies had stores. Yeah. Okay. And, that, and I believe that um, going back, a lot of these companies just would go that survived that got the medicinal license. They just go and buy the entire stock of yeah. everything mm -hmm. at bargain basement prices. Yeah, of course. I don't remember which company it was, but there is one of these. Oh wait, I actually have it on here. Um, the license for uh, AMS, which is the American Medicinal Spirits Company. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, the treasurer, secretary, Andrew Mellon, gave out the licenses, gave himself as the owner of Old Overhaul. Really? Yeah, so he gave his own, like, the, like there's only 10 in existence, but he gave mm -hmm. one of the licenses to his own company. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Makes sense. Jesus. What? No. <laughs> How? It's, it's so interesting. Prohibition, like... Um, no one from that time would agree with me that I think it's it's a great thing that happened. Um, of course, a lot of you know controversy behind it, of course, um, and people love their alcohol, you know. But with that, um, I read a great book um, about the old fashioned and it's about mm -hmm. how like the prohibition like really helped equalize um, like the gender gap in alcohol. Okay. Whereas like women mm -hmm. could only you know out in public drink certain That's things but when everyone's in a speakeasy together women are order ordering old fashions and they know more than the men do and it's like super interesting in that sense but also too more so than that for me it's like when i when i first discovered bourbon i thought bourbon was just boring it's just the you know it's, it has all the same rules like you know like they have to have these certain rules and they just kind of all taste the same sure um whereas scotch is like oh you kind of do whatever you want you finish it in this barrel or whatever and you know you get a bunch of these different climates um but when I kind of think about it, it's like when you are restricted like that, there's so much more creativity that happens where like, well, okay, these are my limits, but what can I do to make a different product? And you create stuff like this, which yeah. is such amazing whiskey, you know? Well, and I, I, I mean, there's certainly been research about this and I, I, I talk about this uh, in my own business and with clients um, about creativity and, the difference between design and art mm -hmm. and that actually creativity is enhanced uh, by rules mm -hmm. uh, you can focus in on what is the important part and not necessarily like oh well we can do whatever we want well I mean that's great but does it work yeah exactly uh, and I think when you have constraints uh, in, with your creativity you can do some amazing things. Oh my gosh, amazing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I always talk about everybody, well, used to, I, I haven't heard it in a while, but everybody used to back what, 10, 15 years ago, used to be like out of the box thinking. Mm -hmm. And I always was like, how about edge of the box Yeah, thinking? exactly, just the border of it, you Just know? the border. <laughs> we don't have to jump out. Exactly. We can stay in the box. Yeah. yeah. It's easier to comprehend that way, too. It's, it's funny, it's like, I used to think that I like, um, Scotch was easy to understand because everything was kind of so different. And I find it so much, like now, it's so much easier to understand bourbon because everything has to follow the same rules and there's only slight changes that make things different. Mm -hmm. And then later you know, on, my goal for 2019, uh, like last year, was like to learn more about agave spirits. I still don't know anything about agave spirits because there's no rules whatsoever. It's like, oh yeah, this is made this way and this is made that way. And there's just, you know, there, there, there's so many different variations, you know. Well, and that's, I, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a goal for last year, but certain, certainly I did some research into gin mm -hmm. um, and how, because, because there is only so much you're going to be able to do with this. Mm -hmm. uh, but with gin, it's kind of just up in the air. It's kind of up in the air. And
actually, I believe it is the yeast and yeah, the grain. grain. Yeah. yeah, the yeast and the grain. Because two, two of the layers out of the four are always... Always the same. Always O and... Yep. And S. I'm going to give a little bit heavier pour because it's our last one. Cheers. And this I, I is my bottle, and but I've had this bottle for a long time, which savor a bottle. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, this is... Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, like... Jesus, save the best for last. Well, and we did. And, and when you look at barrel strength bourbons, and you're always going to pay more. Of course. But understand, it's not diluted. No, not at all. Um, yeah, you're getting, the, in some sense, a concentrate. Totally. Cheers. Cheers. Wow, that is that is heavenly. And and the sad thing is, this is oh, twenty ish proof higher than our last bourbon. Seriously? Yeah, one sixteen. Uh, it's ninety three. So yeah, uh, I would never have known that. Now, granted, we have just tried six bourbons, so. We're in it. <laughs> We're in it now. Uh, yeah. No, it's there's something about this. I I I, I can tell. I've, I've what I'm trying to say is that I've been lucky to build the palate to the sense where I can like taste the proof of something. There are some things that really do surprise me. I'm like, oh, I did not expect that. Like, 114 is a good example where I do not think it's 114. No. Maybe 100. This I can tell it's like 110 ish, right? You know, there is more body. I can't for me. right now. Let's say that. But. For me, like there is more like body to it, um, but just like the amount of flavor packed into that is insane. There's that honey thing going on, um, which I feel like is very common in a lot of like the, the higher end four roses, very honey uh, notes. Mm -hmm. um, but man, that is phenomenal. The nose is definitely alcohol. That that's what mm -hmm. I you, you can the ethanol's there yeah, yeah, yeah there for sure there. yeah for sure but oh, man that's just easy drinking yeah again oh damn <laughs> so that's that's what the back half of this episode is like mm. yeah <laughs> wow. It's, uh, God, it's so good. There's just like, it, it's, it's so interesting too, um, where single barrels, they do get a lot of love, but each single barrel is so different, you know? Um, and I feel like personally, as like a person who like, I enjoy bourbon and I try to like find the positive in a lot of things, you know? I always find sure. something good about it. I don't know if I've ever come by a bad single barrel. Well, I mean, you should. Right. Yeah. Um, if you're gonna release it to the public, it was it was weird. It was a couple of days ago. I was in a. Yes. Uh, yeah. Let me restart that.